We will be having our last meetup of this season Saturday, February 11th from 5 to 10 p.m. at Giesenbroi Beer Co. So if you've wanted to try Break Your PB, you can come have some of it with us at the brewery. Our friend Matt Pangrak will be joining us as well to help raise money for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. We will be raffling off a new clam hub house, Vexlar units, Denali rods, AFCO rain and cold weather gear, blackfish gear, Crappie Chronicles rod series, pro guide batteries, open water, ice fishing, you name it. There's going to be hundreds upon hundreds of dollars of prizes for you to win. Come show up, buy some raffle tickets, let's raise some money for St. Jude's, and let's chat about the ice fishing season while uh, finishing off the kegs of Break Your PB. We will see you all at Giesenbroi Beer Co. For our second stop, we take our first journey out of the state of Minnesota. A brief trip north of the bridge to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Located in the snow-filled abyss above the Straits of Mackinac, an area of the country where snowmobiles outnumber the population of cities and snowplows are the lifeblood of the community. Our team's goal is to expose the untold tale of the fish that roam the slush-filled water pockets of this region. An area that's remote, challenging, and most of all, unforgiving. And if the stories of this place are true, the crappie fishing here could be prolific. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Good morning, and welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. Um, like we said last episode, we are up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan now, chasing down some of these giant UP crappies. Today is going to be a special day. We got our buddy, Ice Team Pro, John Sibley, coming and meeting up with us. We are staying right on the shores of Gogibic. If you look over here, Pink is just kind of stretching and staring at his playground right now. <laughs> we are staying at the root cellar resort it's a honestly a super wicked place uh it's definitely snowmobilers paradise up here because there's about 100 to 200 of them staying at this resort with us and if you wanted to fish this lake this place would be great to stay because there's tons of parking and there's a ton of other people here with machines snowmobile trail right down to the lake and uh yeah anyways i'm getting long-winded but this is our playground for the day. We're going out to Gogebic, the land of gigantic perch and even bigger crappies. So we are out on the lake. Obviously, Gogibic is massive, just huge. And we're out with our friend John Sibley right here. And uh, John is kind of gracious enough to help us hop around to some areas he's ran into these fish. Uh, like we said, this place like has no structure. It's absolutely massive. So the plan of attack is moving a lot, <laughs> drive a lot, drill a lot of holes. We're going to look at the forward facing for a while, try to dial in an area, and then they're just chasing Chasing little bugs around, basically, yep, right? Yeah, chasing wigglers. So these fish are in with the perch, foot off the bottom. They're in this basin. They're not really suspended, but you know they can get 
pretty aggressive and so there's some really nice crappies in here yeah so we just got to move around till we find an area they're around in because they're chasing these little wigglers around they call them up here in the up and uh yeah so we're just gonna look for life and then kind of do our deal so this should be fun maybe even go look at some cribs at some point today here we go On you, dog. Feels nice. It's feels getting angry. Feels perchy, though. Perchy? Yeah. Crap. Oh, what? Big rock bass? Big old rock, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that explains oh, why he came up and absolutely crushed it. A walleye! <laughs> <laughs> came up and smoked it. First, first fish in the morning. The two two species this lake is not known for. A uh, absolute microscopic walleye. And I think Waldo just caught a rock bass. So we're, we're off and firing. Yeah. It did, it just came off the bottom and just slowly rose up. Got some weight. Yeah, it's not light. Like how fast it shoots Come you, bro. Smally! Small mouth. <laughs> Whatever this is, is huge. That's my first brown one through the ice. That's a nice smallmouth right there. That's my first smally through the ice. Being a bass guy all summer long, that is a bucket list for me. That is absolutely so cool. Woohoo! This does not feel like a crappie. It was very active. Yeah, I've never caught a small through the ice. It's fighting just like the one all the just got. Couple Except for that. Okay. That really fast head shake. That's yeah, I don't. Head. This I one don't is know. a perch. If it's a perch, this is I'm just saying, gross. I know, I know, but I, that's. It's shaking its we're, head like we're, a perch. We're, we're in a place where if it is a perch, right? it'll be gross. Head a lot, right? Big small. Big small. Bigger, that's like. Big small mouth. <laughs> that's pretty big. <laughs> That's sick. I was not expecting this today. Yeah, let's get a double pick. We doubled up on smallmouth. Was not expecting that today. He came up and train wrecked this thing. That was awesome. <laughs> I ain't complaining. Look at that. Get your we're calling. So yeah, so we've been, like we said, we're just roaming around looking at areas where the crappies should hang out. Boom. And uh, we saw some big marks on live. And it turns out they were smallmouth, <laughs> which is really sick. That's awesome, because that's a huge bucket list thing for me, at least, is catching a smallie through the ice. So <laughs> that was pretty unexpected and really cool. That was awesome. That was, that was a really fight, fun fight on this oh, one. Yeah. So this is Griff's Chronicle. And uh, these are this is part of our Chronicle series that's available at Thorn Brothers. Uh, just a schoolie rod setup, and it's just made for micro movements. These fish are eating wigglers. Wigglers don't move a lot, so just nice micro movements. And yeah, that was fun. That was. But awesome. we need we need to find the crappies now. So yes, we're gonna keep moving. Oh. Feels like a smallmouth. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Another big old Rocco. <laughs> Very nice. Another big old Rocco. Another big Rocco. Just a fatty. Look at how fat that thing is. My picture of a rock bass. <laughs> you look, look, do you want a picture of that thing? Oh, yeah. There's a nice one though. We'll get him back. Get back down there. That one had uh, zero hesitation. Yep. Came in and just smoked it. But we're going to bounce around this area a little bit more and see if we can't find a a rogue crappie or two and then move on to the next spot. Got him. Got him. I'm trying to keep it out of the brush pile. I mean it'd be dope if it's a crappie because it's really heavy. 
but I just want a big small off. And it feels not small. No, it doesn't look small. Ooh, it looks strong. It's big. It's it feels big. <laughs> well, we knew the we know the new Griff's Crown hook can handle big fish now. Yes, it can handle big fish. Oh, geez, it just it tried just jumping. Tried jump. <laughs> there is a nice one. Heck yeah. Another beautiful smallmouth on the, the drop kick with the Jamie XL. Beautiful little, beautiful little bug. Beautiful little smallmouth. Look at that thing. That is so cool. This is like bucket list for me. So even though we're not catching crappies, I am definitely okay with catching smallmouth because that is stinking awesome right there. I'm sitting right on top of a brush pile, and the nice thing about the FLX30 is you can go to a real high frequency, such as the 300 kilohertz setting, and what you can do is you can get a very precise cone angle and be able to shoot in between the weeds, or in between the, the branches easier, allowing you to see your bait. So that's simply what I did there. I put it to 300 kilohertz, and I was able to watch my jig completely fall in between all the branches. This guy came in right on the bottom, and uh, yeah, I just was able to play them real nice by being able to see them in there. So uh, that's one of the nice things about the 30 is being able to change your cone angle to, to get more precision to it. So there's another beautiful smallmouth right there. That is my by far my biggest through the ice. We're gonna let them go. Boom, and there we have it. I think we're gonna make a big move here. Uh, in about T minus 10 minutes, so we'll see you in a bit. Hang on. Got another. It's another small mouth. <laughs> and this one's bigger. You got enough line on that guy. I do. I want to catch one. Yeah. This thing's got weight to him. Jesus. <laughs> what if it's a suck, man? Oh, I hope it's a sucker. I'll channel my inner griff. She big. <laughs> a big small mouth. That should be like a 30 inch walleye. Kind of, you can just hear like a thud from it trying to jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that last one tried to jump out of the hole. It went... <laughs> it was literally just like... You know what I was thinking this about? Hmm. Thank goodness this rod has a guide for it and not a, a plastic guide like the oh, standard schoolie right reels come with. Already. Yeah, that would have eaten right through. Big small mob. Oh my God. <laughs> That is a giant smallmouth right there. Oh, wow. That is a huge smallie. I'll catch it now. Grab my Vex, drop down there. And it was just barely hooked. Drop kick, 1 16th ounce with that Jamie XL again. And that is a unit of a smallmouth. Nice. Those are beasts too. I'm in heaven right now. <laughs> I'm a bass guy, all open water, and especially like smallmouth going up to Mille Lacs. It's my favorite thing in the absolute world. And uh, yeah, so this is a lot of fun being able to catch giant. Dude, that thing is heavy. Well, you guys seen his face at the bottom of the hole. And you want to weigh it? That is a huge smallmouth. You got the scale? Yeah, that's right. Same. Okay, we're going to weigh him quick. Where's he at? Ah, <laughs> yes. Just beat my sucker. I just beat a sucker. 5.29. 5.29. That is a unit of a smallmouth right there. Okay, we're going to get him back, or her back, I should probably say. It's probably a big female. Oh, she's wanting to do. There we go. Woohoo! Nice. That was a giant smallmouth. Well, Sounds like Sibley possibly found some crappies. So we're gonna go bounce. Okay, 
So, update. Um, we did not run into any crappies up here. Just a bunch of smallmouth. Uh, which was, uh, honestly, that's really cool. We don't get to do that in the metro. There's like barely any smallmouth around there. So that was sweet. However, sun's coming out. It's a beautiful day on Gogibic, And uh, we're going to start jumping around. Kind of like we said, you know, John's ran into them in the past out here, perch fishing. And we're just going to go check new areas of the lake now and kind of explore. That's going to be the fun part, right, Pink? Yeah, I'm ready to rip. Pink's ready to rip. Mask down. Time for a long run. This place is big, so we got a lot of water to cover. Yeah, if you want to just drop right here. Yeah. <laughs> or drill like 45 feet over there. And there's yeah, a there's. Yeah, go, go to that school. Yeah, just drift. Yeah. Drill me one and then I'll just drive it. Yep. I'm going to catch this one. It's right there. Oh, that's a good one. Perch. Crappie? Perch. Holy perch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that wasn't big. I mean, it was, that was still big. Simply just shake the head. I know. Got a little update here. We just came across the lake. Uh, Found this big flat here with a little basin on the back side of it and figured maybe with a more isolated spot we'd be able to pin these fish down. Dropped a live down, there's fish everywhere. Um, first drop I got this, go get my first Gogebic perch and uh, pretty cool fish. And apparently this is a small one is what Sibley says, so I'm waiting to see a big one. And we're gonna keep some to eat. Yeah, and we're gonna eat them. <laughs> That's a little perch. It'll go in the pile though. Well. There's a nice little go gibbic perch for you. Just a dink. But she'll eat, baby. Same thing I was using yesterday. Uh one sixteenth ounce drop kick in the pink color, the glow pink with uh, a Jamie XL motor oil on the back of it. It's starting to get a little ripped up from the smallmouth earlier, but uh, I'm going to try to make it work for one more fish and uh, yeah, put a new one on probably. That one came in right up, right just off bottom, about a foot. It's nice using this little schoolie rod because uh, that tip is just so soft for these subtle bites and it's been a lot of fun fighting fish on them too. That fiberglass blank is just perfect for controlling them, even if you get a big fish on as we had earlier with the smallmouth. Um, we're going to keep bouncing around this basin, though. It seems like there's a lot of life over here, and we're going to see if we can run into a crappie, hopefully. But if not, catching fish, can't complain right now. Oh, he's coming. He sees me. Uh, I don't need it. You don't even keep it going. It's a perch. Yeah. Come here and drop down. What'd you get over there, Perch? Yeah, nice one. This is easy. Jesus Christ. Take it away from them, that's what they was doing. They were f on that. Just like that. You might be here, huh? That was a pretty solid mark, though. Yeah. What are you doing? Who's all this fight? A nice little patchy. He had a bunch of fight and then he just quit. <laughs> That'll be another taco later on. Very nice. Still using that drop kick. Seems to be loving it today. I think 
I don't think they care either. Okay, a little update. It is about like 3.45 now, almost four o'clock. We have done a lap around this place. And if you know Go Gibbick, it is gigantic. Um, and really, we haven't run into much life other than kind of the area we started in. So what we're doing is now sun's up, we're gonna get a sunset and we're gonna kind of hang out here and hopefully see if we'll get a good sunset bite window. Um, yeah, we've seen the most life here, most bugs, most just everything going on. So we're hoping one of these fish will roll through. As you've seen, it is very difficult to target these things in the winter, but they're very big. So if we can get one, it'll be very worth it. Here we go. That's not acting like a small mall. Acting like a bluegill. Oh, if it's a bluegill, it's huge. I mean, it's doing that. Did it? Did it? It's a little walleye. Just a dink. He's angry though. I'll tell you that. Oh, there's another one down there. Let's see if we can get in too. Hooked up. Finally. <laughs> Sick. Dang it. Well, not a crappie. Another smallmouth. This one's quite a bit smaller than the ones that we got earlier today. But ate the jig. I worked him for quite a long time. I actually thought it might be a crappie. The marks look better and you can see like the size of him. He's probably like a 14 incher. Looks a lot like a crappie, especially on a Vex. I'm going to get him back right now. Really nice fish though. Really stocky. Fight really hard. Get going. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, that was super sweet. Um, in a couple of the past videos, uh, we had some comments, uh, questions actually, about these sunglasses. So as you guys know, we, uh, we do a lot with relevant sunglasses and I think the question was like, well, what sunglasses are those? I don't think there's relevant ones. The answer is they kind of are. <laughs> so relevant has a really cool program called the reload program. So these sunglasses right here were a frame that I did really like. Um, they had really crappy lenses though. I liked the windscreens on the side to kind of keep snow out and stuff for ice fishing. So what Relevant does is you can get any frames you want. If you have a pair of sunglasses you really love, uh, but maybe you don't love the frames or you break the lenses out and you want some of the Relevant technology in the lenses, they will make custom lenses for any frames that you have. So um, these in particular ones, uh, I sent them in. Um, they have a machine that literally traces out the, the size of the lens and everything and they make custom relevant lenses to put in any of your sunglasses. So if you want to do that, this is the relevant reload program. Check them out because I love these ones. These are freshwater rose gold and I've been loving them this whole season so far. So now we're here. And they brought them they want to be undefeated. I quit. Yeah. You won, go Gibbick. You won. <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, if you come to go Gibbick, go perch fishing. Because the crappies are impossible. They're in here, and there's very big ones in here. But uh, we have we have struck out today, but that's okay. We struggle basically once on every trip and every once in a while back home. So that's fine. We caught some giant smallmouth, some nice perch. And uh, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to pack up and head in before the sun sets and uh, get back to the root cellar. And then we're gonna take you guys over to a barbecue joint in town that's actually pretty sick. And uh, we're gonna eat somewhere local. So we're gonna show you guys that and uh, just kind of experience the UP together. Cause we need some more sleep cause tomorrow morning is gonna be super early. So I think we're gonna head in and go get some barbecue. All right, so you don't have to cook tonight. You pumped or what? Yeah, we're gonna go check this place out. It sounds bomb. So, barbecue joint, I'm about that. All right, so we just put in an order for apps. Art got youper poppers. We didn't really know what that was, so we're gonna test them out. Jalapenos, filled cream cheese, fiesta breading, deep fried. Sounds mint. We're gonna crush it all. Mint? 
Luke, no, no. you're on. Oh, Luke, yeah, yep, yep. You for popper. I'm like, give your review. Yes. What kind of sauce is that? Whatever it is. Oh, cream cheese. <laughs> All right, next guy. No, actually, <laughs> this thing is really good. I don't know what the. Oh, I've never had a jalapeno popper before, so. Oh my. Seriously. Luke's on a dude. culinary journey right now. <laughs> <laughs> like every week, everything is pretty much new to me. Every day, I'll be uh, get some pulled pork action here. Trying a little barbecue sauce. I think it's going to be good. Luke, did you get a bacon cheeseburger? I did. Yeah. He got chicken nugs. Real original over there, buddy. Can you pass me the ketchup, please, bro? They're all out. <laughs> How satisfied are you without cooking tonight? That was really good, dude. I'm glad I didn't have to make it. Which barbecue sauce was your pick? Ooh, the house barbecue. Oh, Show me. Career. Show me. Boom. All That's day. Good. You know it's good because it's a uh, label maker with yeah. the uh, tape over it. That's how you know it's good barbecue sauce. Secret recipe. I don't know. All right, Luke. I got some too right here. Look, pretty good. We expanded his palate. Look at look at those kids. New sauce. Look, I'm going back for more. You went back for more. Rocking a burger. Ketchup. Waldo, what was your favorite thing? Ooh, ketchup so gas. Bro. The mac and cheese was really good. The ribs were absolutely incredible. Um, the house barbecue sauce. Okay. Cornbread was really solid. The cornbread. Corn bread, number one. All right, we just got out on the ice. Uh, the boys just drilled some holes. I was flying the drone around, and I just got out here, and they've been standing here waiting because we had their rods on the sled. And they're here on the fish, so. Uh, Bart's back here running around. Uh, looks like they're chasing him down on live. We're gonna try to sharpshoot some, but if they start sitting still, we might try to set up a house or something. But it's cold today. It's like eight degrees. So my hands are a little, a little chilly right now. So I'm gonna warm them up, get my Vex ripping, see if I can get on one here. There's two of them now. Little. Little crappy. Oh, we can't keep him. No, nope, we cannot keep him. Let's grab that live. Well, there's a little guy for you. Wow, did that take some co coaxing. <laughs> well, Bart, they do eat that jig. They just don't like it a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. It just takes six years. Yeah. So I'll get that one back. That's an eater. Nice eater. First nice one of the eater. day. Absolutely Soaked. choked the pinhead. Good hanger. Okay, let's see if there's any more over here. He said, good morning. He was like, hello. Douche. Yeah, it took a little bit to look at. Oh, there's a bunch. Um, well, there was. That one will eat good, huh? 60 foot straight that way toward shore. Okay. Towards that point. That is a big one. There's two giants. It's an eater. It is. Yeah. It has been very slow this morning. These fish are extremely finicky. But we've been able to get on a couple. Good little eater though. Good yeah. little eater. They, really yeah, finicky. really finicky. Super They're not, flighty. Yeah. They're, but it's not like they fly away. They kind of just meander away. Right. Like they're just lethargic. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. There was another one over here though. So let me look. Very slow morning. We got here early. We were here right at sunrise and there was a lot of fish around, but I mean, they're just really lethargic and 
it was tough to get them to eat, to be honest. I mean, Griff was able to pop two eaters, but I mean, even he was getting denied, which that means it's a very tough bite. So we're gonna move, go move to a different part of this flowage. So we need to load our machines up actually to do that because otherwise we'll break through the ice. So yeah, on the move, still looking for them. Update, um, so we moved from where we started on uh, kind of just giant flowage reservoir type system. Um, and we drove just way back a snowmobile trail back to the middle of nowhere, just get away from people. There's a couple snowmobile tracks around in here, but for the most part, there's like no holes anywhere. We literally drilled one hole with the live and just spun it in a circle and there's kind of fish all around. So I think what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna start hopping around and seeing if we can sharpshoot some of these schools or just get on top of them. But we're also gonna do is Waldo's gonna set up a house because we've noticed in this kind of UP area, a lot of these fish really just roam. And we wanna see if someone stays put, if they can start catching them. Cause we, we've just had difficulties doing our style of fishing that we tend to do, or that we did in Northern Minnesota, uh, out here. They don't really cooperate with it. But I'm gonna get the GoPro strapped up and get after it because We've got a lot of fish around, and uh, I would like to eat. Oh yeah, okay, well there's a school of about 25 of them coming under this hole, so I'm gonna catch a few. Yeah, so we got out to the new lake here. First drop, pretty nice crappie, nice eater. Got a little pinhead. Heck yeah, and they're stacked down there. There's a whole herd of them down there. You can try that. They're kind of. Now they're all under me. Just a small one. Let's see what else we got. Still a few down there. Ooh, that's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger than the bluegill. Oh my God. Look at that bluegill. <laughs> Not the desired species, but holy cow. Thing's beautiful. There's a nice crappie. Boom. So I was just plucking through that school of bluegills and they just started leaving me. Nice crappie came in. It's probably 11, 11 and a half, good eater. That's what we're looking for so we can cook some food here soon. Get back down there. Ooh, that's got some weight to it. Another big bluegill, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at that thing. Just a sow. Man, we've been catching everything up here so far. Smallmouth perch, not as many crappies as we'd like, but look at that bluegill. Wow, just caught a giant bull out of here and nice hen. Get that back. Wanna let those big bluegills go. They're very important for spawning, as well as letting the big crappies go. But see if we can get another one catching all these so far on um, I just got on a drop kick with a cut down whammy then I'm using uh, Griff's Chronicle the schoolie rod and uh, it's honestly a lot of fun to catch fish on and for people like me when 
get around fish and get really excited. I tend to work a bait too fast. Schoolie makes you slow down. It's helped me a lot. Big one. There we go. That's probably our best one yet, Grip. Get back down there. Hopefully they're still there. Oh yeah. Boom. Griff and I have been chasing these around. Kind of in just, I don't know, this basin area. Look at that fish, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You get yours on a pinhead? Yeah. Okay, I've been catching a mine on a drop kick. I think the biggest thing is literally just getting down there in time, mm -hmm. but they seem pretty parked here right now, actually. So hopefully we can capitalize, but this will be a good eater. And uh, we're gonna keep looking for big ones. It looks like there's big fish mixed in with these schools. And uh, we just gotta trick them and get them to stop moving. I think they're starting to get a little used to us now, which is nice. There's a keeper. Decent one there. That one will keep. That one's probably like an 11, 11 and a half. Sick. On a pinhead. He barely got it though. Look at that. Just barely lip hooked. Sweet. All right, guys, so we got off to a little bit of a slow start this morning, but things have started to pick up. We were able to scratch out some eaters, and our goal today was really to come out here and uh, cook on the ice. So we got enough eaters to do it. So this is going to be super cool. We're in a super kind of remote setting here, which I love cooking in areas like this. So we just set up the X600 as our kitchen behind us. Things an absolute beast. There's so much room inside, so we're going to set up a little kitchen in there and start cooking. I'm going to be making some fish tacos. I think everybody's pretty excited because we've been grinding pretty hard and everyone's pretty hungry. So we're going to get in there, start cooking, knock out some fish tacos, fresh crappie on the ice. Let's do it. All right, so we're gonna put some fish tacos together here. Uh, we have fresh crappies, which is gonna be awesome. I'm just gonna kind of just shallow fry them. I got a cast iron pan. I'm gonna set up a little stove in here but I find it easier to do the fish last. So what I'm gonna put together first is I got some avocados here. So I'm gonna mash those up, um, have a nice little avocado spread to put on the tortilla. And then I'm, I have some red cabbage and some red onions. So what I'm gonna do is put together uh, just a little bit of a quick pickled cabbage and red onion, which is gonna go on this taco. So got head of red cabbage right there and one red onion. I'm just gonna slice those up super fine, get them in a bowl with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and uh, I got a little bit of lime juice and some salt. And then just let that sit. Uh, it's gonna only maybe sit for like 10 minutes while we're getting everything else put together and then it'll start to soften that stuff up and it'll be a nice little bite to put on there. So I'm gonna start slicing and dicing. Let's make some tacos. <laughs> Okay, so I got a few avocados here. What I'm gonna do is uh, just half these things, get them out of the skin and get them in this bowl and I'm just gonna mash it all up. I'm not really gonna add anything else except maybe a little bit of salt. Uh, this little pickled uh, cabbage and onions that I got going here is gonna provide us a ton of flavor for these. So I just want a little bit of avocado to cut through the acidic uh, nature of this pickled slaw here. So that's gonna kind of be the base of our taco and then I'm gonna get the fish going. So time to just hammer these things out and we'll get on to the fish. Okay, I got some catch and cook campfire. I'm gonna get that in with the avocados here and then I got a little bit of lime juice so I'm just gonna put about, I don't know, half a teaspoon in there and about the same amount of lime juice and then get to mashing on this thing. 
Okay, one last thing I'm gonna do before I start making the fish is I got a little bag here. I like to use bags for mixing stuff, especially out on the ice because it doesn't take up any room. Um, but I got a gallon Ziploc here. I got a little bit of mayo. And I'm gonna mix that with some milk and some paprika and then just shake it up in this bag. And this will be a nice little sauce to put on the top of the taco right at the end. So I got probably a half cup of mayo and then just a few tablespoons of uh, just milk in there. And I did keep this stuff all in a cooler to try to keep it from freezing. So <laughs> that was my effort. But I got some paprika too. You can use smoked paprika if you really want to kick it up, but I do not have that. So going with this. And I like to load it up with paprika. I love that flavor in these tacos. All right, so just mayo, milk, and paprika in there. And then boom, shake it up a little bit. And then I'll just let that chill out on the side while we're making the fish. Okay, so I got a whole pile of fillets here. I just <laughs> cleaned all these fish. So you got a nice pile of fillets there. And then I have one bag that's just got a little bit of an egg wash in it. So I just brought that with. That way you don't have to worry about breaking your eggs. I just bring them already broken. <laughs> so I'm gonna do with these is just take the fillets. I got them zippered down the middle and I'm just gonna split them all right in half like this. So we have nice strips of fish for our tacos. And then we'll get them breaded up and get them fried. And these fish were caught right there. Basically right, <laughs> right beneath you. <laughs> Griffin Waldo are actually catching more of them right now. So episode three, hopefully, right? Yeah, yeah. This is definitely, uh, definitely episode two still. But I think episode three is like happening right there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna get these all breaded up. I got the catch and cook flame right here, and I do have a little bit of the crunchy one also, so I might mix them together just to kind of bulk up so we have enough breading. But I love this stuff. It always turns out really good and it gets extra crunchy. So if you wanna get some of this, we got a discount code for you, Crappy 10 get you some catch and cook. But I'm gonna get going right now, get it all in here. I got the fish sitting in an egg wash right now. So I'm just gonna dump all this right in here. Okay, so I got the breading in this bag right here. I got the fillets in this bag. And what I'm gonna do is just take a few at a time, put them in here, shake them up, and then just set them on this board. I wanna let them sit for just a moment. If you throw them into the oil right away and cook them, a lot of times the breading starts to fall off. So if you have that issue, try letting them sit for a couple minutes. But what I'm gonna do now is work through this batch of fish, get them all ready to go, and then we're gonna get some oil hot. Okay, so I got this cast iron heating up right here. I got some grapeseed oil, and uh, what I'm gonna do is just shallow fry this fish. So there's only gonna be maybe about a quarter to a half an inch of oil in this pan. Uh, I got it heating up right now. We'll get some oil in there, and then get our fish ripping. I got this sitting on a butane stove here. I really like these for kind of this backcountry cooking stuff. They're really portable, and uh, they're pretty cheap too. You can find them like on Amazon and that kind of thing. But it just runs on a little butane canister, so you don't need to bring propane. All right, so I'm gonna put these in just a few at a time, just to not go too nuts here. And I'm keeping the oil temp a little lower than I probably normally would, just so we don't totally blow ourselves out of this shack. But it's probably somewhere like 325, I'd say. All right, so the fish is done. I got a tortilla right here, and I'm gonna build one of these up really quick. So I got the mashed avocados here. So all I'm gonna do is start with that. A little on the tortilla here, kind of get things rolling. And everything is getting frozen that I made earlier. <laughs> so okay, so I got some avocado on there. Got some of this beautiful fresh crappie right here. Oh yeah. And then a little bit of that pickled slaw right down over the top of this. Now, just to finish it off, I got that sauce that I made and we're just gonna drizzle that down over the whole thing. Delicious. And then I did bring just a little bag of cotija cheese to put on the top. And that right there is a beautiful fresh crappy taco. I was gonna give this to somebody else, but I think I'm just gonna smash one. Yep. That's exactly what I was hoping it was gonna taste like. And it's really good. 
So I got a bunch of fish made up here. I think the whole squad's gonna sit down, smash a bunch of tacos, and then who knows what's gonna happen. Sounds like the bite's picking up out there.